All right. For more on Saquon, the defense, the Eagles, Hurts' performance, the whole deal, let's turn to the Diddy. Ray Diddinger joins us each Monday at this time. He's brought to us by Verizon. Phones were not made to be broken, but life, of course, does happen. So when your phone breaks, Verizon's got you. Trade in any phone at your local Verizon store in any condition, guaranteed, and you'll get a great deal on one of their uh, best 5G phones with unlimited ultimate. The Diddy. Ray Diddinger. Ray Diddy, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, Joe. How are you doing? Boy, Ray, so much better. How great was it, Ray, with two minutes left in the game to not feel like if my squad pulls it out, I still got to take a shower because it was dirty. Like, they actually, Ray, got a clean win. It was fantastic. It was. It's been a long time. I mean, that's um, you got to go back a couple of years to find a game that they won that handily. Um, but they did, uh, and it was uh, it was welcome, and it was needed. And... Uh, you know, right now, you know, it's it. You're in a funny place with this team because you know, yesterday they looked so good in so many ways, um, but it wasn't all that long ago that you know they went down to Tampa and and looked terrible. So, you know, where are they? I I think this week will give us a, a good test. I mean, they have to go to Cincinnati and play the Bengals. Who, you look at their record, doesn't look that great, but uh, you look at their personnel and they're pretty good. And, you know, the the Bengals have done this year kind of what they've done in recent years, which is get off to a slow start. But we've seen in the past that they tend to, once they figure it out, then they get on a roll, and they're starting to get on a roll now, and they, they can't afford to lose many yeah. more games. So, you know, you're going, to be catching, you're going to be catching them sort of on the uptick, and uh, they have a great young quarterback in Joe Burrow, and, uh, you know, that's going to be a challenge. But if the Eagles go out and they play the way they played yesterday, and uh, Cincinnati, if their, their biggest weakness really is their run defense. So um, I would suspect that they're going to get a big dose of Saquon Barkley. Sure. If he's, and if he's anything like he was yesterday, um, that's good news for the Eagles. Ray, let's talk a little more on Saquon there. So I, I don't know if you saw Van Buren play. Obviously, if you did, you would have been very young. I am curious. Film. 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 I, I okay. saw the film. So Saquon obviously does not have the career accomplishment as an Eagle, as some legendary Eagles backs. But I am curious, is Saquon the – you saw Wilbert? Ricky, LaShawn, B. West, is Saquon the best running back you've seen the Eagles have? I think he's um, I think he's he's different than any other back I've seen them have. Um, I've seen them have fast, elusive guys, um, and and certainly LaShawn was that. Um, I've seen them I've seen them have hard nosed, tough between the tackles, runners, like, you know, I mean, you'll never find anybody pound for pound tougher than Wilbert Montgomery. Uh, you know, and, and, and Ricky was a little bit of both. Uh, but I, I, I've never seen an Eagles back that is that combines the speed and the power of this guy. Uh, I mean, you look at what he did yesterday. And look, I'm not going to try and sit here and make a case that the Giants were a great defense because clearly they're not. Right. But what you saw yesterday was you saw a guy that ripped off three runs of longer than 35 yards. How often does any, any back in the NFL do that in one game anymore? It doesn't happen, really. So he does that. But also, you know, maybe the equally impressive is the touchdown he scored, you know, where he takes the handoff and he, and he runs up the middle, and he's hit at the three-yard line. I mean, he, he runs into a wall at the three-yard line, uh, and he just keeps his legs driving, and he pushes four New York Giants and half of his own offensive line into the end zone for a touchdown. So a guy that can run the way he ran and turn the turn the corner and go 55 yards the way he did, and then combine it with that kind of you know Jim Brown power uh, down at the goal line, that's a combination I haven't seen in an Eagles uniform. Now to say is he the best yet? I don't know, but he's certainly a unique weapon. And I, I remember talking to you guys after he signed. And saying to you, I was a little bit puzzled by the muted reaction in Philadelphia to it. That people, you know, I, yeah, some people were excited, but I, I heard just as many people say, oh, geez, we're paying all this money mm-hmm. to this guy. I was one of you them. Know, I, I was one of them, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I know, I know you're a little skeptical. Uh, and people were saying, oh, you know, he's, you know I've, I've seen him the last couple of years. I'm not sure. I think he's lost it, and we're paying him all this money. And I didn't, Joe, I didn't believe it. And I told you that at the time. I said, I think this guy's going to come in here, and I think he's going to have a big-time impact, and I think he's going to have it right away. 
Um, because I just, you know, I looked at the film and I, I just saw what he was trying to run behind in, in New York, the last, especially the last couple of years. That was a terrible offensive line. I mean, maybe the worst in the league. Uh, and, and yet he never complained. Uh, he was a total pro about it. And he got everything there was to get and then some. And I just had the feeling that at this point in his career, you know, now, now with definitely something to prove with the Giants letting him walk away, uh, I thought he was walking into the perfect situation here. So the fact that he's come out and done what he's done so far, look, he's exceeded my expectations, but I've got to tell you, my expectations were already pretty high. Ray, why is the offense, for, for all the running that we did, and that was great to see, why is the offense still not under center? <laughs> it's, you know, it's gotten to the point, it's gotten to the point now that when I'm, when I'm doing my game, in-game log on my yellow legal tablets, when I'm logging every play, uh, I actually put an asterisk when Hertz is under center because I want to, I want to chart it. I want to see how many times it, how he's many there. did you get yeah. yesterday? Uh, uh, now I, I gotta tell you, I, at a certain point I stopped. The game. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> once you, once you got past, once you got past halftime, there really wasn't much of a game. There were there. only four pass um, plays right. in the second half. Yeah. But, yeah, I, th- but I think, exactly. I think I only had three in the first half. Wow. Uh, and, but to me, the, the way this team, um, with the personnel you have and the ability that you have in Barkley, the weapon you have in Barkley, I would like to see Hertz under center more. I, I, I ju- it, to me, it just, make, it just makes all the sense in the world because, um, because of the threat that he represents. The play-action pass is there. I mean, it's, it's, it's any time you want it, it is, it is there. Uh, and it's, it's just an easier thing to execute if you have the quarterback under center. Uh, and I, I just think that that's something that, you know, I mean, institutionally, I guess, I don't think Sirianni loves it. Um, if you think, look back at Kellen Moore <clears throat> back his time in Dallas, they, they, they didn't have the quarterback under center very much. Uh, it's, just, it, it's just a philosophy of the guys who are calling the plays. But to me, I think from year to year, given the situation and given your personnel, you know, maybe you need to take a, a harder look at this kind of thing. And I just think that, yeah, I'm not saying that they go to it exclusively, uh, but I think they could go to it more yeah. because I think, first of all, first of all, I think it helps the running back. I think I think it's it's an easier formation to him because he's taking the ball on the move. He's not taking it flat-footed. Uh, but the other part is it it really beautifully sets up the play-action pass. And when you have a weapon down oh. the field like AJ Brown, I think that that's I think that's something that you could really have great success with. Ray, what I'm not exactly sure how to describe it. Like. The, the idea of extending the ball, I, I don't know if that's what is so effective about being under center or not. I, I don't know exactly. The, the idea of a quarterback starting under center and then faking a stretch play where he's holding the ball out, where a defense can see him holding the ball out as he's running to place the ball you know in in that back's gut as he's running off tackle that's the that's the one that's the one that I want am I wrong in 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 like hoping that we can get to that point like that we saw that with Donovan a lot we saw that with Russell Wilson with Marshawn Lynch a lot and it's it's just not something they do often Ray it's 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 uh look obviously I, I, I think it's clear Jalen doesn't like being under center, and I think that's why they don't do it. Ray, let me ask you this question. I've given you— But s- hold on. Ray, is that really an explanation? Like, Jalen doesn't like being under center? Is that why the offense Could isn't? Be. Could be. I mean, I, um, you know, uh, I mean, Mike Holmgren, who's probably going to be in the next— he's probably going to be in the next Hall of Fame class. I mean, a great coach, a couple different situations— uh, was he was just wedded to that West Coast offense thing uh, in such a way that he just didn't believe in a shotgun, uh, and um, it was something that he, you know, when he was in San Francisco, you know, Bill Walsh didn't believe in it. It wasn't part of what he did. I mean, mm-hmm. they, you know, the quarterback was always under center there. Uh, mm-hmm. And then when when Holmgren went to Green Bay, you know, he gets Brett Favre, and Brett Favre likes being in the gun. And so he just said, okay, well, the quarterback likes playing out of here, and we've certainly had success with it, so we'll go with that. Um, sometimes, you do, sometimes you do bend your system and your philosophy to the wants of a, of a player, if that player is your quarterback. Maybe that is it, but I, I just think that, well, two things. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of validity to that. I think the way this team sets up right now with its personnel, um, 
I think I think they're very dangerous with a quarterback under center. I really I really do. And again, if, I don't know Jalen's personal preferences. I've never asked him about that. Maybe he doesn't like being under center. He certainly hasn't been that much in his career. But there's certainly value to that. Uh, and it's and it's a look that you can go to and be very effective with it. And I think can set up two of your best players. I think it's it's a great formation to run out of if you're Barkley, uh, and it sets up the play action pass, which gets you some one on ones with AJ Brown down the field, and he's going to win yeah. those all day long. Yep. So that's so that's you know that's that's sort of how I look at it. But yet, but yesterday, I mean, one of the things that came out of it beyond all the statistics and all the stuff that Barkley did, which was great, uh, I was just I thought the running game was very diverse. I thought that they. They did a lot of different things that, unless people were really watching closely, they didn't see it. I mean, there was there was a lot a lot of pitch stuff. There was a lot of stretch stuff. There was a lot of inside zone, outside zone. I mean, they that their their running game was really in charge, varied, and it, was, and, it and it wasn't it wasn't just okay. Here, here here's the ball, Saquon, just go. I mean, they gave the Giants a lot of different looks, and they have a running back in Barkley that has tremendous ability to find the daylight and you know and do that quick step cut kind of thing that's just very you just, it's just very uncommon to see a 235 pound man that can do the things he can do yeah ray denninger with us here as he is uh, every monday at this time by the way it's 94 wip hd1 philadelphia as we broadcast today from the tasty cake studio great to be with you on this monday morning with an eagles victory in hand four and two now ray let's talk about the defense six games into the season there have been three games in which the performance has been exceptional Two were against horrendous offenses. Is the defense good? Uh, good question, because I was asking myself the same thing. <laughs> um, I mean, you've gone two weeks now not giving up a touchdown. That's hard to do in the NFL, regardless of who you're playing. Um, you know, I think one of the things that you have to uh, factor into this is that it's, it's a new defensive coordinator in, in Vic. And it's going to take a little time for everything to kind of fall into place. Um, but we've seen now um, that they can, be, they can be very effective. Now, last week with Cleveland, it's hard to judge because Cleveland's offense is that bad and their quarterback's playing that badly. And, you know, the Giants are not a good offensive team anyway, and you take Andrew Thomas out of there at left tackle and, and they become worse. So it's it's hard to take take yesterday and just project and say, well, they're here. You know, this is this is a, this is a top five defense for sure. Um, I'm not ready to go there yet, and I think that's one of the reasons why I think this next test going to Cincinnati next Sunday will be a good one because you know the Bengals are kind of doing what the Bengals have done before, which is start the season slow, and uh, now they're starting to win some games, and you're going there and you've got some. Really good, really good offensive players and a great young quarterback. So I think that's going to be a bigger test. But I think you're seeing you're you're seeing Vic's philosophy. I think Vic has kind of figured out. Maybe this is the best way of putting it. I think Vic has now kind of figured out what his guys can do. You know, and I think he's done a better job of putting them in positions where they can do the things that they can do. And you know, Nicobe Dean to me has always been a guy that was, could have been a really good blitzer. I never understood why they didn't use him that way more. Uh, I mean, he's got the kind of explosiveness and he's got the kind of instincts to be able to find that to find that crack and get to the quarterback. His timing is really good. He showed you that in college. I just think they underutilized that the last couple of years. I know the injuries were part of it. But now you're seeing that, that Vic has got some confidence in being able to, to shoot the gap with Dean from time to time, and he can be very effective there. Uh, and it's, I think it's starting to come together. One of the things that really helps um, is, is, boy, the play of the two young guys is oh, really good. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mitchell, Mitchell and DeGene are – and, you know, I remember talking to you guys during the draft uh, about how, how happy I was that the Eagles got those two guys because that was their biggest area of need was they needed, they needed players in the secondary desperately. And I thought they got the two best on the board. I really did. Wow. I, I thought I thought that Mitchell and DeGene, in in my grading system, such as it is, um, they were they were they were defensive backs one two for me. Uh, and to, to, to be able to come out of the draft with both of them, uh, I thought was I thought was tremendous for this team. And you're starting to see it. I mean, you're seeing that Mitchell can really play. Uh, I mean, he can really cover and he can really hit. I mean, he's he's a he's a big he's a big guy who's physical. But he can run with anybody, and he doesn't never backs off from a challenge. So I think I think you've got that spot nailed down now for a while. And DeGene is just a very useful player that can do multiple things. 
And yeah. I think you're seeing that Vic is now that now that he's healthy and he's over the hamstring, you know, Vic is going to be able to use him more in a lot of different ways. And you can do that. So I think the back end of this defense, to me, as those young guys grow, is only going to get better. What is Cooper DeGene best at, Ray? And how do you expect Sidney Brown fits into to all this? Um, well, Sidney's you know Sidney's just coming off the injury, so I, I, you kind of got to – I don't know how ready he is to take on a bigger load. But I could certainly – you know, DeGene – the gene to me, I, I, when when they drafted him, my thought was that he was going to be one of your two safeties. That he was going to be, it was going to be him and uh, and I thought that he and Sidney Brown were going to be your two safeties. Uh, and then they bring back uh, Gardner Johnson, and okay, that changes things. And Blankenship is still here uh, and playing okay, so I don't know if they want to break that up. Uh, you sound enthusiastic. I yeah, well, I, yeah, and, he's and he's, here, and he has a, he's he has a okay. nice quality of being around the football, which is a good thing. Uh, but DeGene, to me, I think, to me, he, to me, I think he's a natural safety. I really do. Um, but uh, I mean, I think he has Hamilton-like ability. I mean, mm. I think, I think he's, wow. I think he could, I think he could be that kind of player. He's that smart. He's that tough. He's that physical, uh, okay. and I think he can be that kind of player. Uh, but he also looks to me like a guy that can play in the slot, you know, and it seems like that's what they've kind of got, that's yeah. kind of what they got carved out for him right now, and he's doing it really well, but if he plays in the slot, he can play in there, he can cover, he can make all the plays in coverage, but if he's close to the line of scrimmage like that, you know, Vic can use him as a blitzer, you know, he can, he can slot blitz him, uh, and, he's, and he's good enough at that that he can be an extra pass rusher for you in certain situations, so... You know, I think that Mitchell is just an anchor at the one cornerback spot. I think he's got that spot nailed down, and you're fine there. Uh, DeGene right now is a guy that I think you can use in multiple ways, and whatever you ask him to do, he can do it because I think he's just that good. Ray Dittinger here, a couple extended minutes with Ray uh, right now, then the phone's shortly. Ray, let's talk about Jalen. I'm curious what you made of his performance. I'll say this. I was generally underwhelmed by it. I thought he had two phenomenal plays, the deep ball to Jail, uh, to A.J., and the run where he escaped the pocket and really escaped major pressure and, and made a nice run. Otherwise, I didn't think he was very good. What would you think of Jalen? Um, I thought I was. I thought he was. I thought he was good. <laughs> you know, I, I just. I did. I, I came away. From, you know, I, I, the numbers are certainly underwhelming. I mean, ten completions, 114 yards. Um, but it's two straight weeks now. He hasn't turned the ball over, which was the biggest issue with him, uh, and he hasn't done that. Um, he didn't, uh, and, and I'll tell you that you, you can't throw a ball better than he threw the, the, the 41 yarder to Brown. I mean, that was just, yeah. that was, I mean, that was, that was a sweet, sweet pass, especially with a rush right in his face. Uh, not he's being able to really as fully, he's releasing it. Yeah. Not being able to fully step into that throw, yeah. uh, and yet drop it in the bucket the way he did was that, I mean, that was really, that was really impressive. And you're right. The one where he breaks out of the pocket and runs a, and runs for the first down um, was that that was good. I I just thought, yeah, Joe, I know I kind of know what you're saying, but I felt good about it. I, I just felt that going through another week and not turning the ball over and just seeing uh, seeing him look like he was in command out there and kind of totally. enjoying what was happening out there. I that was kind of way I felt about it. I mean, you kind of needed to get him to this point where he could put a couple of good games back to back and. Sure. You know, I, I really do think that I'm sort of old school in this way. I don't worry so much about the numbers that a guy puts up on the board if you're at the quarterback position. At the end of the day, it's about winning the game and doing what you had to do to help your team win the game. And, and, he, cert and he certainly did that. So, you know, I felt pretty good about it. The, the one thing that scared me was the one run that he had where he took the big hit oh, on his right the shoulder, shoulder down. at the, goal, Holy at, at the yeah. goal line. Well, he got you know, the first I mean, I down. But that's he a, might have yeah, gotten himself it. knocked up for the season if he keeps doing that, though. Yeah, that was a well, listen, when he exactly right. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm looking at that. And when he takes that hit at the right at the goal line, I'm thinking, oh boy, you know, are we going? Are we? Is this going to be one yeah. of those things that that's now he's going to get up slow and he's going to be he's going to be wiggling his arm and then they're going to take him to the tent? He's not made you know, out of glass. He he's fine. You know, in a game, you know, in a game that you clearly had in hand, I understand the competitive instinct. I understand you see the opening, you see the goal line, you go for it. But that, in that kind of a game that you had so clearly in hand, I mean, that, that, 
uh, I was a little, I, yeah. that one, that one made my heart flutter a little bit. And I hope that, you know, I, I would like it to see him not take those hits and going forward. All right, Ray, final thing here. We, we got to ask him though, about your whole point that they're, right. they're hiding. Sure. I said, Ray, Ray, here's my contention. I believe that what we saw yesterday is the beginning of the Eagles coaching staff hiding Jalen Hurts. That it wasn't just, hey, we can run the ball on the New York Giants. It's, hey, we can typically run the ball pretty effectively. And Jalen is one of the weaker elements of the offense. Let's hide him a bit and just become like the 2021 team was, like the 1995 Eagles team did as they transitioned to Ricky Wooders and Charlie Gardner after week four and just said, we're just going to run the ball a ton because that way we were less inclined to turn it over. And win more games. And I applaud that, but I don't like what it says about Jalen. That's what I think is occurring. Do you buy that theory? Um, no. No, I don't. Uh, I don't. I, I, I just think that um, – I think we talked earlier in, in the conversation now about the defense kind of evolving with, with Vic Fangio, with you know, new coach, new, new sort of philosophy, uh, some new personnel, um, just sort of de- figuring out what we are and what we can do. I think you probably got a little bit of the same thing on the offensive side. Uh, and, you know, Barkley changes the dynamic very much. I mean, you're, you're a very different team with him in there. I mean, they've had some good backs over the last couple of years. It's not like they haven't had anybody that can run the ball, but they haven't had anybody like this. And I think, I think almost week to week they're just figuring out exactly what this guy is, what he's capable of, and what that means for the whole offense, and more specifically what it means for the quarterback. And if it means you're asking him to do less, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. No, it's a good but thing, I, I but I, think... I just wish he was better. But it's a good thing if it's what the situation requires. Well, sure. And, and I think that situation changes pretty much week to week based on your opponent, based on how the game plays out and stuff. But, listen, you, you've seen – this organization has seen what Hurts is capable of. You've seen the way he played two years ago. You've seen – you know, with his level of ability. You also see the other playmakers that you have on the field. And, you know, with Brown and Smith, you have two just tremendous receivers. I mean, as good a pair of receivers, I think, as there are in the league. You know, that's always going to be a part of your game. But I think what you're trying to do now is you're trying to shape what this thing can be, not, not, in, not in individual elements, but what it can be as a whole. And I think yesterday what you kind of saw was a lot of that offensive stuff come together. Again, you have to you have to qualify it by saying who you're playing against. Sure. And the Giants, yeah. you know, going into this, we knew, you know, the Giants were giving up over five yards a carry. They were 30th in the league average yards per attempt. I mean, that's a bad defense. I, uh, and Barkley, and a, and, a, and a highly motivated Saquon Barkley figured to have a big game up there. Yeah. But it went way beyond that. And so, no, I think that, Joe, Joe I, I kind of know what you're saying, uh, but I didn't really have those feelings. I think this team is still in the process of figuring out just what it is. You know, and um, I think this week this week will give us a better idea. But they desperately, desperately needed uh, a, a game like this, mm-hmm. where they were just in command, where they were clearly better, where it was over, uh, where it was over early in the third quarter, and you could just kind of sit back and just kind of relax. Totally. It's been two years since they had a game like this. They desperately needed it. It was the right time for it. And let's now see if this truly gets the train back on the track. All right, Ray. Final thing. So it's been a month and a half of pro football this year. We know whose record's better, but I'm going to ask you whose team is better. Philadelphia or Washington? The Eagles or Washington? Who has a better football team? Uh, I've actually gone back and taken a look at Washington just to try and figure out how real they are. Um, And I'm coming to the conclusion that they're pretty real. Mm -hmm. I don't don't think that they're – I don't think this is an illusion – I don't think this is sort of a little spurt that's going to level off. Um, I think this division, well, we haven't said this in a long time. I think this division, it's going to come down to Philadelphia, Washington. Because, uh, we, I mean, you saw the Giants. They're, 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 they're gone. They're dead. Forget that. They stink. Um, and and Dallas, has, Dallas has some players, but they've got so many issues. I, I just don't see them pulling it all together. Um, I think his division, and we haven't said this in a long, long time, but I think his division is going to come down to Philadelphia, Washington. It's going to come down to those two games. Um, now the quarterback is hurt now, and I don't know. I'm, I've read mixed reports now about how severe it is. Some people say he might be back in a week. Some people say it might be a couple of weeks. But as long as they've got him, um, they're going to be a threat. Uh, they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good. And I do think this division is going to come down to those two teams. I'm not dismissing it and saying, oh, it's a fluke. Ah, it's a schedule. It's this. It's that. No, I think Washington's for real. 
And I think that the two games that the Eagles are going to play with Washington head-to-head are going to decide the division. Ray, we love having you on the show. Thanks for being a big part of it today, my man. We'll talk to you next week. Always a pleasure to be with you guys. Take all it right. easy. You Thank got you, it. Ray. The Diddy. Ray Diddy. All right, let's get reaction on all that and, of course, most importantly on the game yesterday and what it means about our beloved Eagles who felt so they're our beloved Eagles again. They Thank goodness. Thank the Lord. Beloved? Yeah, because you know what? They were our belittled Eagles last week.